Hi, this is Noma Dimitri from the Alpine Garden and this video, in this video you will learn how to deadhead Asiatic lilies but what I'm saying about Asiatic lilies can actually apply to any kind of lily that you might have. In fact, um, the, what an Asiatic lily is versus an Oriental lily versus uh, an ordinary lily um, is subject for debate um, and don't get confused in all the nomenclature there's so much around lilies because they exist almost throughout the globe except in the very very north and in the very very equator uh, and they've been hybridized that means different species have been mated together to produce new and new varieties so it's a very very confusing to try to pin down exactly what is an Asiatic lily what is an oriental lily and what is a non-Asiatic and non-oriental lily but don't worry about the nomenclature because what I'm going to say to you about Asiatic lilies which I'm going to show you today will apply to all other lilies as well. Um, so why deadhead your lilies? Um, your Asiatic lilies or all the other lilies? Why deadhead them? There are two reasons. Number one, you will get better lilies next year and number two, you will get probably one child, means a second free lily that will show up because you've deadheaded this one. So these are the basic reasons to deadhead the lilies. Um, there are two reasons. There's a third one, which is that dead flowers on a stem look ugly. So if you want your garden to be pretty, you deadhead to get rid of an ugly dead flower. So those are the three reasons. Now, I'm not going to give you the type of advice, the one, two, three, how to deadhead lilies, because you can find that anywhere else. And in my experience as a gardener, and as you can see, I have a big and very variable garden up here in the, in the mountains, in the Alps, um, with lots of different species and also even a, uh, can you see it from here? and also even a, a pond with all kinds of pond plants and lotuses and water lilies as well. So, um, so what I'm going to tell to you and the reason I think you come to my channel and the reason you watch my videos is because you're going to get a little bit more depth, which means instead of just learning the one, two, three of how to deadhead lilies, I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you why uh, you do things the way you do so you can understand the biology and the botany of the entire plant so if things bizarre things happen and you need to address them you can because you will now understand what everything is and what it needs to thrive in your garden or in your pot as well whatever I say in the garden has to do with the pot so there we go we start first of all you can see I can show you my lilies this is my lily my Asiatic lily bed as you can see, there's all kinds of nice little lilies. I decided to make this bed. There are three kinds of lilies here right now coming out. And I decided to give them hot colors, oranges and reds um, and yellows, basically. And, you know, kind of yolk yellows, like the egg yolk yellows, because I decided that this particular pattern, you may decide another pattern with different colors. So these are, these are the Asiatic lilies that you see over here. Uh, we're going to zoom in and look at them now um, more closely so we can understand what uh, every part of the lily is. But before we do that, uh, I want to tell you one very, very basic thing, which is what is a flower for? What, why does this plant here, why does it make a flower? A flower effectively is advertising. Uh, it's like a highway billboard, okay? That's what it is. Its sole function is this. It doesn't make it to be pretty. It doesn't make it for us. It makes it for insects. So this billboard on the highway of this entire area, okay, where all kinds of insects are going through, says, look at me. Look how impressive I look. Do you see anything else like this around? Come and fertilize me okay and more on this later so this is why you will often see flowers such as the lilies plants such as the lilies to create a long stem like this one and have the flowers at the end the higher you're off the ground the more likely just like a billboard the more likely it is that the coming traffic will notice you and also the better your colors the better your smell whatever your strategy is for getting notice um, uh, 
you know, you, you, you are a magnet for attention. That's what a flower is and that's its only purpose, okay? Uh, to attract these insects. Why attract the insects? So they can fertilize the flower. Why fertilize the flower? So that the flower can make children, okay? But I just told you that you will cut the flower off uh, and you will have a child anyways. Why and is there a discrepancy in what I said before and what I'm saying now? The reason is that some plants, and, and including lilies, have two ways of making children. One of them is through the flower, which means you have the flower, the insect comes and fertilizes it, it makes a, a, a fruit. In the fruit there are seeds, just like an orange is a fruit that had seeds. The fruit falls off, the seeds disperse, new plants come out. Okay, so that's method number one. This is the method that we do not want with lilies, which is why we deadhead them. Method number two for lilies is that down there where you can't see anymore, where the root part of the plant is, where the bulb is, there is, there, there is a bulb. Okay, there's a bulb and roots um, which keeps the plant sturdy, keeps the plant standing and also takes water up to the plant and nutrients from the soil. So this plant, if it's happy, um, this bulb, if it's happy during the year, that means if the plant is not so exhausted, that means if it has not bothered to make fruits and seeds with the flower because you've deadheaded it, that means you give it a break from more, for more childbearing, seed bearing here, then it will concentrate the extra energy on splitting the bulb splitting the bulb that is underneath there and giving you another child, giving you, or if you want, a sister or a brother to this particular one, which will pop up next spring pretty close to this one. So if you have a pot with one bulb right now and you follow my instructions and all goes well, you will end up having two next year. Okay, so this is the thing to remember. Uh, so, two methods of, of child making for a lily, one through the seeds here that we don't want, the second one through the bulb, which is what we want. Why do we want that? It's a long biological explanation, but it has to do with all the hybridizing, all the crossbreeding of these things. Uh, you may have heard that they say, don't plant seeds of this particular plant because it will not come true to form. This means that, I'll make it simple for you, this means that you can plant the seeds of this damn thing and then you might get a lily that doesn't flower. Or you may get a lily that has flowers that are the size of a rice, of a, of a grain of rice. You don't want that. If you want the same lily as this one doubled, you let the bulb split itself and you deadhead. So now after a long, long lecture, we're going to go specifically to deadheading and what the parts of the flower are. But before that, let me put on my glasses. <laughs> So here we are with my glasses on because otherwise I can't see the screen and I cannot show you what I'm showing you. Uh, so we're going to first of all look at the three lilies that we have here. They have exotic names like uh, peach, uh, marmalade and orange fire and uh, whatever, all names like this ones. I will show you the three ones. These is one of them and I don't remember if it's the pitch marmalade but it looks like this and as you can see the flowers are not necessarily pointing up but they are pointing kind of to the side. One of the advantages of this one that makes it look very nice in the garden is that it has a dark stem and this looks nicer in the garden uh, because everything is green and it stands out. This is another technique for the flower to stand out. Okay, the next one I'm going to show you, let's move over here, is this one. Ah, the sun is down so you'll see better now. Is this one. Look how pretty this is. It's all, um, it is spotted. Uh, it is an orange spotted, orange yellow spotted with uh, red dots. Uh, and again, all this is to attract the insect, but it also attracts us as well because we love these things. And the, the one perhaps I like the most is this one because it looks like porcelain. This is something that they call a rose lily. It's a weird cultivar that creates, um, that makes a lily that doesn't really look like a lily, that kind of looks like a rose. Uh, I find them very, very pretty. And the bud of the lily, like this one, when it, before it opens up, looks like a normal lily, but then it opens up and it looks like this. Um, so those are the things, and I'll show you some more over here, uh, because these are even more open. And you'll see that they start, they look, they look like 
yellow roses, but they're, of course they're very, very thick. They have the thick um, pe sepals of a lily, so they're very, very strong and sturdy. And these guys will last in your garden after they bloom for about three weeks to a month if conditions are good. Uh, if you have a drought or something horrible happens with global warming and anything, uh, then they will uh, not last as long. But if they're happy, they will last long. These have been around now for about three weeks um, and they still look good. So here they are. Uh, this particular type that points downwards, just for your information, I promise I will not give you nomenclature, but some people ask for it. Uh, this is called the Martagon lily, which makes all these lilies that I kind of open up like banana peels and they point downwards. So this is a Martagon lily. Now, let's, uh, let's move on quickly because I'm taking maybe too much of your time. Some people want short videos, some people want long videos. It's impossible to know what to do. So. We're going to look at this type first because the same applies to this type and the other type. So what's going on? You will see this long part here. This is the female part. Okay. This is the, this is the whole objective here. The fruit will come from here. These little parts are the male parts and is what they, and they have pollen. If you ever bought lilies from a store and you touch them, your fingers have a little powder. That's the pollen. The whole point of the flower is that the sperm, the pollen from here will go here here will fertilize the flower and then you will have the fruit and the seeds and the continuation of the life of the plant. So what you want to do is you want to let this, this is still very pretty and this is very pretty, you want to let it continue living. Uh, uh, maybe I should first show you the, the same parts on this one. It's exactly identical but I'll show you anyways to avoid confusion. So as you can see here we have the female part in the center, it's this thing here. Okay, this particular part is the female part and you have the male parts over here with the pollen all around it. It's always the same thing. One female, a bunch of males are around, they're sending the pollen to fertilize the flower. Now, as soon as an insect comes and this flower is fertilized, the plant has no use for the flower, so it's so it's brutal, it gets rid of it. It's a billboard after all, it's advertising. We've made the sale, we've made the fertilization, we don't need the billboard, let's throw it to the trash. So what it starts doing is it starts basically, there you will see it with this one, it starts um, taking the strength out of the sepals, okay? And they start wilting and then they wilt even more like here. Okay, uh, let me see, can you see this? Yeah, they start, they wilt even more, like over here, and at the end you have nothing left, they fall off, I'll show you, and you just have, uh, there you are, uh, hold on, where's the camera, here it is, here it is, uh, I'll go to, uh, yeah, there we go, um, no, I'll go to another one, here. I'll do the, let's do this. So the, the things start to wilt and then you have this, okay? This thing, ah, I saw a good one, sorry. This one will do the trick, okay? So here they are and exactly, that's exactly right. So here they are and all the flowers, here is the, this one, it's this type, okay? So they are drying out. Oh, this is the perfect example. They dry out and they fall the sepals and then the last thing you have is this you're left with this particular little thing. This particular little thing, you can see that the female part is, all, is still there, okay? The male parts have fallen, the little male parts with the pollen have fallen. And, uh, but you still have the female part because it's the female part that has the baby. This part here, this last part here that I'm tapping right now, this green part, is the fruit, okay? Very soon the female part will fall off and the fruit will continue to uh, expand and expand and expand just like an orange or a lemon does and it will have the seeds inside. So this is what you want to get rid of. Okay, this would, yeah, and it's simple enough to, there are two ways to think about how to do it. Okay, if you're a bit of a maniac and you want to do it immediately, to deadhead immediately, to save the plant all the effort, what you do is you come here and you snap off this particular part. Okay, pop, I snapped it off, here it is. Okay, and I just let the little stem. Okay, it's gone. I've deadheaded this particular flower. Okay, there are still the flowers that are looking good, so I'm not going to bother deadheading them. But as soon as each one becomes like this one, 
okay like the one I just cut like this one and this one that you see here these ones you know as soon as they start becoming like this I'm gonna get rid of them okay so you can just go and just snap them off with your finger or with a scissors what have you and they're gone all this part is deadheaded okay so this is what you do if you're a bit more lazy and you don't want to go to each little teeny thing and remove it and whatever you wait until all of them um, until all of them become like this they lose the sepals and they look ugly until all of them become like this one and then you just cut the thing here okay very important you cut where the first flower is was okay you don't cut the stem all the way down to the plant because the stem is still green and it still makes photosynthesis and it's still useful for the plant okay so it's very important that you find where the flowers start and you snip here as soon as you snip here you've deadheaded this entire thing and you're done and you can go on with your life okay um, and therefore by doing this you have not expended the energy of the plant into making children and seeds that you don't need anyways and this part will be preserved it will go down it will follow down the plant and it will go down to the bulb the bulb will become stronger and if you're lucky it's going to split and give you a second asiatic lily or any kind of lily uh, next year so that is my little uh, lecture on deadheading and I tried my best to give you the information on the biology of the plant so that you know what you're doing. If you like this video, hit like, subscribe, send it to your friends, whatever you want to do. Uh, it, uh, it helps. It helps. Uh, this is Noma Dimitri. There's plenty of videos in my channel about other plants and other deadheading. A lot about tulips too. And I'm going to make very soon one about roses because roses are really, really complicated to deadhead and uh, people are very confused and I get lots of emails asking me to provide some information on how to do it effectively without going nuts with all the details. Anyway, Noma Dimitri from the Alpine Garden. Take care.